Transmitting high atop of Florida's peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to podcast number 200-200. The title of today's episode, The Haves and Haves Not in Law Enforcement. I am your host for this evening, Alpha Mike, and I welcome you to this podcast. How do you get in contact with us? It's easy. Radar, radarcop.com will take you to the website where you can hear all our episodes from 1 to 200. Radarcopnation.com will take you to our official website where you get much more information. Social media. Everything is on the table except Twitter. We're not on it. Everything else? Radarcop, Radarcop Nation, Radarcop Podcast. Any of those, and you'll find us. President number 45 has said to the Republican Party, don't use my name. He's made money for them, and he says, I'm in charge. As another thing that we've got on the books, the romance with the crooks continue, and the Democratic Party as prisoners around the country will enjoy stimulus money just like you and me. What are we going to talk about today on this podcast? Well, I'll get to you with that in a minute as I go through the roster. And let me tell you, I can't wait to rechange over to what's going to be our regular programming. Why? This is a handful. It's a lot of work, but it's all for a good cause, and we understand it. All right, so we got coming up in the month of March, and I'll go ahead and trickle it down all the way down to April, end of April, and then we go into regular programming. The Have and Have Nots you're listening to today, episode 200. Mm, episode 201, March 14th, and that's going to be Like Gideon. That is a part of the AWOL Monday series, The Word of God. Uh, March 15th, which is a Monday, Subcom- Subcompact Glock 202 with Kilo Sierra. In fact, we, we today, the day I'm doing this podcast... We attempted to do these episodes and we had technical difficulties beyond our control uh, uh, over on my side. But long story, not enough time to tell it. March 17th, the luck of the Irish will bring us delusions, part of the leftist mental illness, 203 episode. March 20th, Parler, get on it, Buccaneer series, 204. March 22nd, we go into the gun series, also with Kilo Sierra, and we will discuss where you can bring your gun. Let's say you're, you're licensed to carry your weapon in one state. You want to make sure you can go to another state, reciprocity, and we're going to talk about that, how concealed gun people, whether you're new in carrying a gun, You need to be on top of your game, especially in today's Bolshevik states of woke. March 24th, episode 206, Don't Mess With Texas. We'll talk about some great laws that they're doing over in Texas relating to guns. Kilo Sierra will be with us also. March 27th, a a lot of programming in March, as you see. March 27th, episode 207, 
Schizophrenic Rob is not crazy. Buccaneer series. Great episode. We're going to discuss an individual that talks about privacy, privacy issues. He is educating thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans. And I really enjoy Rob. And uh, some people call him Schizophrenic or Schizo Rob on his own channel. But uh, that's why I said that. He's not a schizophrenic. He's not crazy. But I am going to enjoy doing that show. March 29th, we have pre preemption. Is that important? It's dealing with guns, and Kilo Sierra will be here also. Now, imagine this scenario if you will. You live in a specific uh, uh, state, you're... State allows the carrying of concealed weaponry. Many, many thousands of people in your state, citizens in your state, are licensed to carry that weapon, but you can't go to a particular town or city. That's what we're going to talk about in episode 208. And uh, March 31st, uh, 209, we're going to continue in our Outlaw series, and we're going to do our first episode out of, well, actually, it's our second out of the series of our One Percenters, and this one will be titled the um, the Outlaws, and we will got to we got to update that on the website as well. <clears throat> that brings us all the way into April, man, and I can't wait for May to come in because we go from three shows to two. And the reason for that is because uh, we spend a lot more time with two shows doing uh, research and development, a lot of better episodes. We kind of feel we're rushing trying to get things, uh, you know, written down and doing your homework and making sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are, are crossed and sometimes it becomes a little bit too much. All right, April 3rd, we have a series on the AWOL Monday. It's not been titled yet, 210. April 5th, Firearm Owners uh, Protection Act of 1986, the peaceable, uh, the peaceable Journey Law, that's 211. April 7th, episode 212, the system is its worst enemy. April 10th, Gun Owners of America, Buccaneer Series 213. April 12th, 1970, Organized Crime Control Act. Snuck that one in. And uh, we'll talk about that one. April 14th, Episode 215, OT, Off-Duty uh, Monitoring. Monitoring Supervisors that need to monitor their officers or deputies that might have way too much overtime, and that could be a problem. April 17th, 216, the words, the word series on AWOL Monday hasn't been titled also. April 19th, the Glock 45, why? We'll discuss that. Why did Glock create the Glock 45? Not the caliber. The model. And that is episode 217. April 21st, This is the Way, Roll Call. It's part of the Roll Call series, 218. April 24th, 219, the Word series or part of our AWOL Monday has not been titled. April 26th, we're going back into the Outlaw Motorcycle One Percenters and we're we're going to talk a little bit about the Mongols. And I have done a show on them before, but we're going to uh, bring that up to date. And April 28th, The Checkout. And it's going to be a great series, episode 221. And it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of pomp and ceremony when you get uh, over with the Academy and they pin your badge on you. And your family's there and everybody, and you celebrate. It's like a big graduation and party and go dancing and everything else. And then reality hits, and you've got 20, 25, 30 years ahead of you.
But the checkout, when it's time to leave the retirement, it's very somber. It's just you walking down the hallway with a little bag with all your personal belongings ready to dump into you the HR department of your agency as they stamp a bunch of stamps in front of you and tell you, thank you. And you walk out that door, take your ID so you can't get back in the building, and that door slams behind you. Episode 221. And then May 2nd, we go into twice a month, and that's going to be Sunday nights is when we're going to load those episodes and and also Wednesdays. Wednesdays, regular time like we've always done. That's going to be the new lineup, and I can't wait. All right, we spend a lot of time on that. What are we going to talk about today? Well, let me give you the outline. That I give you a good indication of what we're going to talk about. Number one, who are the members in most law enforcement departments? Number two, old versus new. Number three, positions of power and influence. Number four, family business. Number five, Uncle Earl's last will and testament. And number six, closing it out for us, all roads lead to Rome. That's what we're going to talk about. And speaking of all roads, I don't know about Rome. I know they lead to holy ground. And we're going to discuss the Word of God. Today, we're looking at, in Scripture, the book of John, chapter 14, Verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all things that I said to you. John 14.26 Of course, you can pick up more on what I've said here today on our subject series called A Wall Monday, and we will break down all these verses that I read about 30 minutes or less, but it will give you some spiritual growth. You can't stay a midget all your life without God in your life. That's what you do. You stay a midget. Today's episode, the have and have nots in law enforcement. A lot of civilians are probably wondering, what in the world is this all about? I heard the outline and I don't understand What do you mean? Is there rich and poor in law enforcement? Well, not exactly. Everybody gets paid relatively the same. But what there is, is influencers and non-influencers. And we will discuss that. It is time to bring up the short bus and discuss what in the world I've been talking about The Haves and Have-Nots in Law Enforcement, Episode 200. My buddy Jake, which I miss tremendously, used to have a saying in the agency that we worked together. He was a 34-year veteran 
retired, lasted probably a little bit less than two years and passed away. But he used to say real loud for everybody to hear, this freaking place, and that wasn't the word freaking that he used, is all about the have and have nots around here. And boy, was he right. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Now, as I said in the beginning opening credits, civilians probably won't understand a lot of what I'm talking about. But in law enforcement, ever since Moses first threw on a pair of shorts, there have been the have and have nots. Of course, the have and have nots exist in almost every profession in America. For those that say, impossible, foolishness, this is complete idiotisms, then, my friends, you live in a fantasy world. Because I lived for 27 years in the world of have and have nots. The first subject we're going to discuss in our outline is who are these members in most law enforcement departments? Well, of course, depending on the size of your agency, there could be a lot of, let's say, inheritances, or there could be a lot of real close friendships. What am I getting at? Well, even if your department is small, medium, or large, or extra large like NYPD, there is a connection on a lot of the members, officers, deputies that belong to that law enforcement agency. A lot of them had two left feet as they maybe worked at the local grocery store. But their uncle, which was in law enforcement, said, just apply. Do what I'm telling you to do, and I'll get your career. And they did. As a result, they have joined the ranks of the have and have nots. A story comes to mind many years ago. We had, and I won't name his name, but a sergeant that was part of the have and have nots crew. He was acting as the watch commander at the time, and he grabs his radio to transmit, and he says, Watch commander to sergeant, blah, blah. Another sergeant looks in amazement and says, Hey, you just called yourself on the radio. And he said, Oh my God, I didn't even pay attention. And then he proceeded to say, Sergeant, blah, 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 to the watch commander. He reversed it. The other sergeants were completely amazed at the imbecile. A part of the have and have not crew, two left feet, but family ties will get your pension. Now, before you jump to conclusions, I didn't know anybody in law enforcement when I came into it, at least the department I was in. And it was a tough, difficult road for me to fulfill. But the have and have nots didn't matter how difficult it was because they had family ties that would help them navigate through the agency. In some cases, all the way up the chain of command. Our next title is Old versus New. Is there a difference? Oh boy, is there ever. You see, the old school law enforcement, the have and have nots were traditional. They go back many decades 
And anyone that questioned anything about that relationship, they would automatically be squashed like a bug. Today, the new generations are a little bit more sophisticated and they might complain and say that they feel a little threatened and they want to go to a safe place. But it's those relationships that the have and have not have, sometimes you don't even know. Let me explain with my good old beloved dear friend Jake that gave a great explanation to me one day. So one day, we are standing by the bulletin board where all information was placed on memorandum form for personnel as they were coming in to look at and be up to date on most of what was going on. 99% of the stuff that was on that bullet board didn't really mean anything to anybody. And a lot of people would either just ignore it or, of course, they had to make some fun of it. So my buddy Jake would come in and go, hey, hey, come over here, bro. The obituaries are up. He used to call them the obituaries. And it was the death of an officer in the department. But what was so funny about it, if there is anything funny about it, was that the family ties would be attached to the memo. What am I talking about? Well, it would sound something like this. We are saddened by the loss of officer, blah, 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 taken from us way too young, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then it would say, of course, leaving behind a brother of officer so-and-so, sister of so-and-so, cousin of ta-ta-ta-ta, uncle ta-ta-ta-ta, and the list would go on. And the family tree, the have and have not list, would be divulged. He would actually keep them and file them in his locker. The have and have nots. His favorite saying, this effing place is full of have and have nots around here. Never forget. Power, positions of power and influence. Now, you could be a nitwit, didn't matter. Didn't know how to tie your shoelaces, did not matter. But because you were part of the haves and not the have-nots, you were given given influence and power. You see, you knew a little bit more than the normal guy, and you knew how to navigate through the agency better than most. You could actually land and very comfortable, sophisticated positions that maybe would take somebody years to get in. But being a part of the haves, and you were not a part of the have-nots, your career was spelled out for you. As you had half your lunch on your uniform, but it didn't matter. You were a have. You became an influencer. You started your own little crew, and people would navigate towards you even though you had maybe two cell brains that were actually working. But because you were a half, people wanted to be your friend. It's a family business. It's passed down from generations to generations. And even if you have two left feet, doesn't matter. Your road to success would be paved for you. And you would go up the ranks with almost no abilities whatsoever. 
A lot of people might say, well, I don't know what agency you worked in, but not mine. You're nuts. Because if you were that naive that you were like RoboCop and didn't look around, it existed. It exists in every agency at some level, at some form. If you are in law enforcement or were in law enforcement and you're hearing this podcast, you're probably shaking your head because you have a story to tell. Uncle's Uncle Earl's last will and testament handed down from generation to generation. Uncle Earl would go up in rank to such a high position that generations of Uncle Earl's family would be set in that agency on a golden path. And again, your abilities in no shape, form, or any skill set was needed. You were upward mobility. All roads lead to Rome. You see, it didn't matter what you knew, what you didn't know, what area you worked in. You had a job to do. And that job all went in the same road towards Rome, the capital, headquarters, the palace dome. And you would bargain and you would do the palace guards work for the king and queen of the agency. Because all roads lead to Rome. What am I talking about? Let me give you a couple of examples here. There you are. Two left shoes on one on two feet. And they've placed you in a position of trust. You are a trustworthy employee. Wink and a nod. And they've placed you in internal affairs. Your job is to investigate other officers or deputies based on allegations against them. Now, since you really weren't that clever, Uncle Earl knew to tell your bosses, make sure you give the kids something easy to do. You know, he's a little limited. But every once in a while, that mega case would be given to the village idiot. And the village idiot would do the palace guard's work on that case. People would have positions that others would kill for. And have, they would have no skill set for that position. But they were placed in there because they were a have, not a have not. Whether it was motorcycles or the detective squad or the official mouthpiece of the department as the public spokesperson didn't matter assistant to the chief all these great and glamorous positions you didn't have much under your belt as far as arrest collars knowledge of the job prosecutions you were just like there you were a uniform, and uh, once in a while, you would, uh, like I would always say, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. You had to keep up appearances, so you had to do the basic job. Or like a dear friend of mine used to say, we get paid 
to do the bare minimum. That's government work. That was another saying in the agency. Good enough for government work. Now, for you citizens that are listening to this podcast and completely outraged by the filth that's coming out of my mouth, this is reality. This is everyday law enforcement in America. And a lot of people don't believe that Mayberry actually exists. But it does. It does. If you remember, and I hate to pick on a specific agency, but during this, I believe two years ago, during this hot summer in the United States, thugs would go around with water guns and squirt it on officers, and officers would take the abuse because they were afraid to do anything. They were humiliated, laughed upon, And quite frankly, they were an embarrassment to the department. So you're probably saying, well, what group are they in? Well, those are the have-nots. You see, if they were a have, they probably would have taken the water gun and hit the guy in the top of the head with it because he's a have. There's nothing going to happen to him. We know how to take care of our own. For those that are saying, yes, he's absolutely correct. This is law enforcement, white law enforcement. No, 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 (laughs) no, 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 not so fast. This is law enforcement. It comes in all colors and shapes. Doesn't matter. If you're a have, you've got it all. If you're a have not, well, you kind of swim like a little fish in a big ocean, making sure you don't get eaten by a bigger fish. So all roads will lead to Rome. It trickles down from the top all the way down to the last person coming through the door. They do the palace guards work, which basically means they're company people. Because you see, they shouldn't be there in the first place, but they are there because remember Uncle Earl wrote them in the will and they're going to do a pension, 20, 25, 30 years And they're going to go up in rank and make double what the average guy makes so they can make a bigger pension. They're set. They are set for life. A sad story was told to me when I was a young rookie once. And it dealt with uh, not the agency I was with, but another jurisdiction. And it was the mayor of the city of Miami. He was, um, had an encounter, let's say, with us. And so we were talking to him. It was just, you know, in, in, in interaction back and forth. There wasn't any arrest or anything. And um, very nice guy. And as he drove away, the old timer that was with me said, you know, he got his retarded son a job at Parks. I go, what? Yeah, the kid's really bad. And um, he got him a job in Parks and Recreation, and he retired out of there. And I, the guy's telling me the story, ran into him, and man, this guy was really, really bad. They had him picking up like leaves in the park. Did that for 30 years. Got a pension. The have and have nots. They exist anywhere in government. 
You know, if you look at our Congress, you start to wonder, man, are those have and have nots? Well, that's up to your own interpretation. But um, it would resemble some of what I'm talking about. So what happens? Is law enforcement doomed because of the have and have nots? No, absolutely not. It continues to tick and tick away. It is the heartbeat of the agency. Because of this have and have not mentality, it is a fine run machine. It is what the lawyers' civilian world would call nepotism. Let's see what my good old friend Webster says about this word, nepotism. Says it's defined as favoritism based on kinship. Hmm. Sounds like a have looking out for another have. Nepotism. Boy, in my career did I hear all kinds of baloney about nepotism on, well, you know, it really doesn't matter if they're not like directly under them. You know that, right? And you'd look at them like saying, are you full of crap? But they did the palace guard's work looking out for the palace. So it was allowed. Nepotism in America is bigger, more fancier, and more sophisticated than uh, than ever. Today, they masquerade with different last names. You wouldn't even know the family tree. It's amazing that it exists, but it does. And I don't know what law enforcement agency serves you, but I can guarantee you somewhere in America, you're listening to this and you're saying, yep, 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 nepotism. Some people also might be saying inbreeding, but we're not going to go that far. This is a PG rated podcast. So the have and have nots, like my buddy Jake said, this place is full of have and have nots around here. 34 years, he said it. In 34 years, he was right. I dedicate this show to him because he was right. What do we have coming up next? Episode 201, Like Gideon. It is a part of the AWOL Monday series, and we will be uploading that Sunday night into Monday, I believe it is. Like Gideon is the name of the episode, and it is the word of God we will look at when you think you're not up to the challenge, but God throws you in that position, a position of confidence, a position that other people believe in you, but you just don't believe in yourself. Don't forget, we've got a lot of episodes coming up with Guns with Kilo Sierra. We encourage you to listen. We are going to go into a lot of detail on some of these gun shows. And a lot of it has to do with your own thinking pattern. You know, we live in a society in the Bolshevik states of woke, and you just can't carry like you might have carried before. What do I mean? Well, the left is just looking for an excuse to pull everybody's permits, let's just say. The good thing is that I believe there's up to 13 states that are starting to go to constitutional carry. We're going to have a show on that. Basically, you don't need to have a license or a card. You're an American citizen. It's written in the Second Amendment of the Constitution that you can move the right to bear arms. As such, those states have moved to eliminate all this card-carrying member nonsense 
and said it's constitutional carry. We're living in difficult times where difficult people want to take away not only rights that were given to us by our the forefathers of this country, but God-given rights. A lot of people don't understand what that means. Well, I'll explain it to you. It basically means God gave us a right to protect ourselves and our lives. And as such, one of those instruments is weaponry, guns. And our forefathers believed in it so much, it came in as a Second Amendment right behind the freedom of doing what I'm doing today, talking. And they said the second most important is the right to bear arms to protect yourself and your family. Anybody trying to take that right away from you is wrong. You can't hit the reset button and you can't rewrite America like our communist friends want to do. Sorry, can't do it. We're permanently stuck with what we have. Good, bad, and indifferent, it is America. A country that I'm proud of, a country that I love, and a country that I would die for. Why? Well, my parents came here running from a communist country, and I owe this country a world of gratitude that I probably most likely never be able to pay and accepting them in this country and I was born in. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of our podcast, episode 200. We have reached a milestone, my friends, 200 episodes. Man, it's been a journey. Well, the cops are here and I got to go. But remember, it's been my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, and the law enforcement agencies that serve you, even with the have and have nots. But most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out. Three, two, three. Four, three, two, three, two, three, 